The Lord be with you. Welcome to online worship. My name is Reverend Beth Hoskins on behalf of Inman Presbyterian Church, as well as Landrum Presbyterian Church in the upstate of South Carolina. I welcome you to worship this morning. If you want to help us spread the word, you can like us, share us, or comment on YouTube. If we'll have two hymns in the service. If you want to see lyrics to those hymns to sing along, you can find them at inmanpres.org. Uh, just a couple of things for members who might be watching before we begin. Hang with us. It won't take long. In Landrum, we have changed our collection items from for Operation Hope to cleaning products. There's a bin in the narthex. You can put them in there. Uh, so we have changed that. Um, also, the, the class on Wednesdays is going great. It meets at 12 at noon, um, and it is an in-depth study of the scripture that I preach on each Sunday. So uh, you're welcome to join that. It's going through Lent. In Enman, we have a new group that meets on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. It's a prayer and support group led by Debbie Medford, who is a retired hospital chaplain of many years. So uh, you're welcome to come to that. That's on site in the Fellowship Hall. And PW, Presbyterian Women, is gathering uh, this Saturday at 930 in Enman. And they have a special speaker, Olga Anasenko, who's director of a ministry that she started, basically starting support groups mainly for Russian-speaking women. So that should be interesting. And that uh, is open to women as well as men. They wanted to make sure I invited all the men. Both sessions meet tomorrow on Monday, I think on Monday, tomorrow. Landra meets at 2 and Enman meets at 5. In terms of prayer concerns, I'll just lift up the new one, the new ones. So uh, please pray for Stephanie. She just started chemo Friday for her breast cancer. The prognosis is good, but, you know, that's a long road. So pray for Stephanie and Sean and that family. Dan had shoulder surgery on Friday. It went well, but he'll have a little bit of time where he needs to recover. So pray for Dan. We just found out uh, last week that Lee has been in the hospital for a couple of weeks and has had an occurrence of colon cancer. So please pray for Lee as well as Linda, who is battling cancer, and the others. So a lot of people to pray for these days. Well, let us now put aside the worries of the world and take a deep breath and center ourselves on the God of love who calls to us in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Let us come together to worship in spirit and truth. We come to travel with Jesus the way of the cross so that our Easter Alleluia will take on no new meaning. Let us worship together and reflect on the light of Christ that we might remember what discipleship may cost and what it may reap. Let us worship the Lord.
the Lord washed the feet of the disciples so that they would be clean. And the Lord is here now to do the same for us. If we will humbly offer the dirtiest parts of ourselves to his loving care. Let us confess our sin using this prayer written in the third century by a father in the faith origin and then followed by a time of silence for our own personal prayers. I invite you to pray with me. Oh Jesus, my feet are dirty. Come even as a slave to me. Pour water into your bowl. Come and wash my feet. And asking such a thing, I know I am overbold. But I dread what was threatened when you said to me, If I do not wash your feet, I have no fellowship with you. Wash my feet then, because I long for your companionship. And yet what am I asking? It was well for Peter to ask you to wash his feet. For him that was all that was needed, for him to be clean in every part. With me it is different. Though you wash me now, I shall still stand in need of what other wa- that other washing, the cleansing you promised when you said, There is a baptism I must needs to be baptized with. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. If the Lord, our teacher, has washed our feet and forgiven us, so we ought to forgive one another. Hear and receive the good news this morning that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. I invite you to think of all the good things that God has done for you and to lift up a prayer of thanksgiving now, even as you consider how you might lift up this thanksgiving by the giving of yourself and your things. Let us turn to God's word as it comes to us from the Old Testament, from Psalm 51, verses 7 to 12. Listen for the word of the Lord. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us now turn our attention to the Gospel of John. We're up to the 13th chapter. We're working our way through the whole Gospel. And um, we're up to chapter 13. Um, This really represents a pivotal point in the story. So far, uh, we've heard Jesus speaking about his hour that is coming. He's referenced it many times. We've, we've, we've heard about how it is coming, but it's not yet. It's not my, t- my hour yet. And uh, So here we have heard about it all the way through the story. In the midst of his gathering his disciples and all the life-changing encounters he's had with with people from Nicodemus the Pharisee to the woman of Samaria by that well. Um, we've, we've heard them reference the, the hour that is coming uh, as this conflict develops and sharpens with uh, li- religious authorities, particularly those around Jerusalem. And we've heard about it while he has performed all manner of powerful, powerful signs. Seven of them in John. From changing water to wine to the last one we heard in the last chapter about Jesus raising his friend Lazarus from the dead. The seventh and final sign. Always he has spoken of his his hour that is coming, but is not here yet. But here, in chapter 13... Verse 1, John tells us, Jesus knew his hour had come to depart this world and go to the Father. And so here in John 13, the story turns towards its inevitable conclusion. Hear now God's word as it comes to us from John verses 1 to 17 and 33 to 35. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And then a little later, Jesus says, Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reverend Debbie Thomas asked, If you knew you were about to die, what would you tell the people you love? What cherished hope or dream would you share? What last urgent piece of advice would you offer? In our gospel reading this week, we hear Jesus' answer to this difficult question. Judas has left the Last Supper in order to carry out his betrayal. The crucifixion clock is ticking fast and hard. And Jesus knows that his disciples are about to face the greatest devastation of their lives. So he gets right to the point. No parables, no stories, no pithy sayings. Just one commandment. One simple, straightforward commandment. Summarizing Jesus' deepest desire for his followers. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Followed by a true statement. By this, everyone will know you're my disciples if you love one another. Drop mic, walk away. But it's so hard. So simple, but so hard. Love one another. If nothing else... The pandemic has revealed on full display how hard it is to love one another. Mask or no mask, convene or cancel, on site or online, to have food or no food. And everyone, every single person has an opinion, a very, very strong one. A life and death stance on the matter. And we disagreed and we still disagree. Sincerely, deeply, passionately. The hardest thing you'll ever try to do in this life, my friends, is to try to love someone. Just ask anyone who's married or raised a teenager or lived through a pandemic. Loving people is hard. How do you do it? Jesus not only told us, he showed us. He got up from the table. He took off or laid down, laid down his outer robe, And in the customary manner of a servant, took a towel and tiled it around his waist. And he poured water into some sort of basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them 
with that towel that was tied around him. The master became the servant of all. How do you love? You sacrifice your own pride, your own will, your own self-interest to serve someone else's need. Sacrificial love. This is what Jesus showed us and taught us. When I was a very young minister, um, I was given a list of people to visit in nursing homes. It was in Florida. So I went to a nursing home, and I all I was, had been told is that the, the person had had a stroke and was pretty severely um, severely limited in what she could do. And, and so I, I walked into the room, and uh, there... Sitting on the bed with her was her spouse of, of many, many years, and it was lunchtime. And uh, he was very carefully and gently putting food in her mouth as much as she could take uh, in very small bitefuls, and then inevitably some would dribble down because it was obvious that she was pretty severely limited, and he would clean and then he would ask her what do you want next uh, what about this or this or that okay some of this and he was feeding her one bite at a time and wiping and feeding and wiping and while he was doing that he introduced himself to me and he introduced me to her and he told me all about some of the wonderful adventures they had when they were married. They loved to camp. And they loved to go to uh, festivals in, in towns. You know, there's little, little festivals you, you can find sometimes in the small towns. And, and he talked about how brilliant she was and how she loved to read, especially poetry. And he nodded at a table on the bedside, at a book, I'm sorry, on the bedside table and said, I read to her every day, he says. And I said, really? I said, and, and how long has she been here? And he says, oh, about five years. I said, then you come every day? And he said, oh, yes. I wouldn't be anywhere else than with my sweetie. By this you will know, um, people will know that you are my disciples, said Jesus. When you love one another, you know it when you see it, right? Uh... Also, years ago, I heard this story. It, it was told by uh, Rosalie Potter, who was Associate Executive Presbyter for Foothills. I'm sorry, Foothills. Central Florida Presbytery. I'm getting my presbyteries mixed up. That happens when you get old. Stuff gets mushed up in your mind. But this was Central Florida Presbytery. She was the Associate Executive Presbyter. And she, she had... Really, this horrible automobile wreck. It was a head-on collision at 50 miles an hour. It was a miracle she survived. Uh, the airbag saved her life, but the, the seat belt like cracked her ribs, and she had neck and spine issues that left her in pretty severe pain from head to foot, and it took her months to, to be able to even function. So she, she told me uh, while she was recovering, she got to a really kind of dark place. As you can imagine, she was in, dealing with pain and trying to figure out how to function again. And she was in a dark place when the phone rang one day. And on the other end of the line was a tall steeple preacher from a big church in Orlando. And he, he was calling to check on her. And uh, she said in her misery, she, she broke down and she told him, I, I'm doing okay, but I, I can't, I can't bend down. I can't, I can't bend down. And every time I look at my bathroom, it's disgusting, I, but I can't, I can't, 
I just can't clean it. And she cried. Don't worry, he said. I'm on it. And he hung up. And this was a big, powerful guy with lots of connections everywhere. So she figured he's making a couple of calls, right? He's going to get it taken care of. And someone's going to come over there and help her. And, and she's happy about that. She said about 20 minutes later, the doorbell rang. And she went to the doorbell and there he was in rubber gloves holding a bucket with brushes and cleansers of all kinds. And, and he goes and, and scrubs her bathroom from tub to toilet. She said, I will never forget that sight as long as I live. This tall steeple preacher on his knees, cleaning my toilet. And she would tear up. Jesus, the Son of God, sent from heaven to us, gave up everything. Laid aside everything, every everything to come and show us how to love God, and how to love each other. And by the end of this gospel story, we know he's going to do much, much more than stoop as a servant before his disciples and wash their feet. As powerful an image as this is, and it is powerful, we know that by the end, he's going to lay down his life and be lifted up on that cross to heal our sins. This is the one who looks at us and says to us, a new commandment I give you, love one another. Just as I have loved you, he says, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, you, you came and you showed us what true love looks like. And we pray that you open our hearts and our lives to receive such a wondrous gift as you offer. That we may be empowered to love each other. For we know that it is in loving each other that the world is transformed into the kingdom of heaven. That in the, in the final say-so, it's not going to be the acts of power, but the acts of love that make the difference. Oh, Lord our God, help us to love. Help us to receive your love and to give it. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And as you have called us to love each other, we lift up for your care our brothers and sisters who have special need to, today. We lift up to you, uh, J.C., and others who are struggling in nursing homes to live with dignity, to recover their strength, uh, to, 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 to not be lonely, and to have community. And we pray for them, and we pray that you show us how to reach out and be your hands and feet. We also pray for people who are seeking healness in their bodies. We pray for Stephanie, who has started chemo, and others who are 
undergoing painful treatments. We pray for Dan, who's recovering from surgery, and others who are doing likewise. We pray for Lee and Julian and Linda, for George, Shelley, Tom, John, all the people on our list. And we admit, Lord, we don't we don't know all of them closely, but you know them, Lord. And we pray for them that you would bring them health and wholeness and peace. We also pray for those with unspoken concerns who carry pain in their bodies or pain in their hearts. And we pray that you would encourage them this day and grant them wisdom and boldness for the living of this hour. We also pray for our communities of Inman and Landrum and wherever we're, we are, that you would use us to create a community of love and shalom, um, that we would be good neighbors and good citizens and others would see and be encouraged by our good behavior. Oh Lord, we also pray for our country and for this world which teeters on the edge of all-encompassing war. We certainly pray for the people of Ukraine and we pray for their leaders and we pray for uh, Russia and, and Putin and that leadership that they would come to their senses, Lord. Bring them to their senses that they might see that the, the, the way to prosperity is not through war but through peace and help our president and our Congress and other leaders to know how to respond to such viciousness for it is very difficult, Lord, and complex. And we pray for them. We also pray for your church, that you would help us to be a bold witness of life and of love in this time in which we find ourselves. And we pray that your words would be in our hearts and that we would be able to show with our actions the love you have given us in Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we lift this prayer and pray as he has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in using the words of the Apostles' Creed to say what you believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us uh, lift up a song together. Blessed be the tie that binds. <laughs>
I wish for you God's greatest blessing as you go back into your life and into the world. May you carry this love that Jesus shares with you in your hearts and have it for yourself and share it with whoever you meet today and this week that they might see just a glimpse, just a glimpse of the God revealed in Jesus Christ. Bless you on your way and take with you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit this day and every day. Amen.